Well, this is a cool looking scene. What do we have here? This looks like it's twin motion. It is twin motion. Look at this. Fantastic. This is Renee Rabbit of Rabbit Design. And what we're looking at here is a little preview of part nine of this tutorial series. Just wanted to give you a teaser before we jumped into part eight. We're gonna be going over how to create this scene in twin motion in part nine. Please stay tuned for that. I've been looking forward to this video as a little bit of a challenge from the community from back in part three. So stay tuned for this part eight coming up. Enjoy. Okay, we're in. We're in part eight of Twin Motion 2020 tutorial series. And to start off, we're gonna go over something called scene states. And you can see here, I've got two 10 meter boxes sitting in front of us. And we've got box 10 meter and we've got, we're gonna just rename this guy to box number two for a little bit of clarity. Okay, you can see here underneath the scene graph, we've got something where it says statistics down here and we've got a right carrot. In fact, should be an up carrot. Uh, because it expands upwards and you can see if I click this down carrot, it's going to minimize back down So click this and it expands upwards And then if we go to the section where it says statistics and that down carrot I'm gonna click that and we're gonna get to scene states simple simple process So what we've got in the bottom hand corner here is this little plus icon and yes, you guessed it It adds a state to our scene states, which I actually would prefer if they were called scenes It gets a little bit redundant to explain to new people or doing any kind of tutoring so We've got one state that's been saved now. Now what that does is it's saving the state of the scene graph. More specifically, if we were to make this box number two go invisible and I wanna return back to the state that I had saved, I can click on this and there you go. It's gonna return everything back to the way it was when this was captured. Now of course we can hit this icon, which I believe is the recapture icon if we're take similar icons that are you know built throughout twin motion and that would recapture this state so that if I turned off box number two and hit this recapture turned it back on just to illustrate the point and then click on state it should in fact disappear because it recaptured the state of that scene graph to further illustrate this let's go ahead and turn this box number two back on which you know state would turn it back off let's add another scene state now we've got a state number one if I click on the first one it's got that box off here's a new state of the scene graph and it's got that box box turned back on so that's really quick easy way of creating multiple different options if you want for a particular project it's pretty powerful when you think about you know the different uses you can implement using this feature of the scene states so now that we've got that out of the way, I want to introduce to you guys Megascans. Megascans is a company called Quixel. They actually go out and scan 3D geometry in the real world and translate it into things that we can use in Twin Motion. In fact, if you do have some kind of any kind of Unreal product like Twin Motion, I believe you have access to Quixel's Megascans. And so if you download their desktop software, particular for PC in, in my case, we've got something called their Quixel Bridge. And the Quixel Bridge um, is a portal, if you will, to their online platform where we've got access to all their different 3D uh, files as well as a bunch of their decals and, and a few other things. So some powerful stuff in here, some really high quality things. You can see right here, I'm uh, tucked into the downloading sections, excuse me, download settings of this section where I can you know, set my preferences for downloads. Uh, namely LOD LOD stands for level of detail and it's a sliding scale zero to I believe eight if you get really into this uh, Level of detail zero is going to be the best detail that they offer in their scans All the way up to things that don't have any detail at all it seems and then uh, various different maps that are going to come along with those 3d scans that will download for you and I'll start this off by saying I already downloaded something. I already downloaded something and so we're gonna import it and see what the difference is between a couple of these different level of details. 
So we'll go ahead and open and I'm going to navigate to that Megascans library, which is right here. And then they've got a downloaded section if you're using the bridge software on your uh, on your PC. And this particular thing I downloaded is a plant. That's how it's categorized. It's categorized the same way it is in the bridge software. So that's how you have to locate it. Uh, the naming convention isn't always easy to discern from what you actually downloaded because this particular item was called something completely different than plants 3D RJ something something. So I've got three different versions of that particular item. And then within the versions, we've got different levels of detail. So I'll go ahead and click on one of these levels of detail, expand my option. I'm going to collapse all and leave it as such. In fact, I could try to do the Y up because I happen to know that this is turned on its side, but this is just another one of those gripes I have with twin motion. As I zoom to this selection, you're going to see that in fact, this thing is turned upside down. So it is nice that we can change the axis, axis, I should say as it imports, but without any flip option, there's no way to correct things such as this, which means we've got to do some workarounds, unfortunately. Now, as I plant this on the ground, we noticed we could see something that was underneath here. Yeah, from over here on this side, but we can't see it from this side. So we know right away, if we were to click our eyedropper tool, that we should be able to go into settings and turn two-sided on so we could see both sides of this thing. So there we go. We've got a level of detail for item from Megascans. And let's go ahead and import a couple more here. We're going to do a level of detail, uh, let's say two, and see what this thing looks like. It should look exponentially more detailed than that first one. We're going to go ahead and use the scene material because we're going to edit it. All these scans use the same material, which is really nice, um, especially if you've got a couple variations because then you can go through and uh, fix a few things um, on a global scale in terms of the material file. Let's do one more import. We're going to get that level detail zero, which is really going to be that good one. And then twin motion, please, can you give me a little setting here that just says save my last setting so I don't need to keep expanding options and doing all these unnecessary clicks like this. Just save the last scene state and I would be very, very happy. So there we go, we got a level detail zero there, a level detail two and a level detail four. You can see that level detail zero has got a few extra bits of geometry that the other uh, level of details do not have. So uh, very clear, you know, they've done a good job of scaling this, especially for someone that's gonna try to keep their scene as realistic as possible or as quick and fast as possible. So. Uh, let's go ahead and get into this material file. Now, I already know that there's a problem with this material file and we'll show you this in just a second. Before I get too far, I don't know why this is set to gray, but let's crank it back up to white and then hit that more category and load in a texture. I'm gonna navigate back to that Megascans library and then find that same plant and get into the textures folder. And then I'm gonna get into the Atlas folder. So in here is my albedo map, commonly uh, called an albedo map. It's similar to a diffuse map or the main texture that they you know, built this geometry from. So there we go. We can see it looks, looks pretty good so far. Obviously that level of detail uh, four is, is lacking a little bit. Now, the main problem here is even if we turn on this opacity mask, nothing happens. And that's because this main texture is built as a JPEG, which JPEGs just don't carry any kind of transparency with them. So we're going to have to create transparency. Unfortunately, I'm going to need a separate software to be able to utilize this particular mega scans. That's not true of all mega scans, but this particular one it is. So I'm going to use Photoshop for this particular task. And you can see here, I've already done it once, just to illustrate what we're looking for. We want to make it so that this check checker section actually is saying that there's no texture here at all. And to get there is a little bit of a process, but it's not too bad. I don't want to make this into a Photoshop tutorial, but all I did was take the albedo mask, bring in the opacity mask, and then flip the two. Let's see. Shift Control Z, it's going to be. I flipped the two. I made layer zero that albino mask, a clipping mask onto that opacity mask. And then I inverted the opacity mask. And then I deleted everything 
outside of that. It made a quick selection mask, if you will, or a clipping mask. So I was able to clip this out. And then the last bit of this is I want to export this as a PNG file because a PNG file will carry that transparency through. And here you go right here. That's a PNG image. That's the one that we're going to need. So um, plenty of tutorials online on how to create this particular effect. The ultimate result is going to be that we're going to upload a different albedo mask, which is this guy right here. And we're going to see all of a sudden that clipping takes place when we've got this opacity mask option turned on in our material properties. And you can already see this is starting to look pretty good. So next thing is we've got in our settings bump or normal mask, which Twin Motion will automatically take a normal mask as a normal mask instead of say a black and white gradient bump mask. So we'll load this normal mask up. This is going to make kind of a big difference as it plays with reflection, which we also did get a reflection mask from Quixel as well, or what's called a glossiness mask. Once we turn that reflection up, we're really going to see that bump mask mask take hold or that normal map take hold here. You can start to see the texture in these. And I mean, they start looking really fantastic. I mean, this these Quixel skins just look fantastic, especially when we've got it double-sided so we can't see through the underside of this. It looks nice. That level detail for probably going to never use that. So I'm okay deleting him. <laughs> Maybe way off in the distance that might be helpful, but probably not for, for my general purposes. This, of course, is, is pretty nice. You really have to weigh you know, the pros and cons of how detailed and, and you know close up do you need to get here. This level of detail, too, would probably work for me for most scenes. So might want to say that to the library. And then that level detail 4, excuse me, level detail 0, just looks as good as it can look. Of course, you can download 4K resolution texture maps that gets to be pretty heavy on your system these are in fact 2k resolution maps i could probably decrease that as well to something uh, as low as a thousand resolution or even a 512 so uh, this is all part of downloading that that quixel bridge assets and getting them into twin motion and of course saving them into your library now before i save these into my library i want to touch on a trick that i went over on part seven of this uh, twin motion tutorial series and that is I want to go in and get a positioning node is what I like to call it I'm gonna go into my primitives and pick something like this cylinder which is maybe a little too big let's go for a one meter cylinder there and I'm gonna shrink him down hit my number six key so I can get to scale and scale this guy way 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 down and then I'm going to apply something like a dirt to him and position him right where I need him to be underneath this. I'm going to get in tight, just make sure that's the right location it is. And back out a little bit, and maybe I'll put something like dirt onto this. There we go. I'll adjust that scale just a little bit. And now that I've got that called dirt, I can go ahead and rename this cylinder something like flower and drop this guy right on top of him. If I drop it to the, so that there shows up a line and a down carrot on the left side, it's gonna just change the order of the hierarchy in the scene graph. But if I drop it on top of flower, flower now is a parent to this child here. And so if I click on the parent and move the gizmo, it's gonna move that object together, which is a great thing, especially if I wanna move it onto some kind of, oops, didn't mean to rescale it there. I want to move it onto some kind of off angle geometry makes it really more of a powerful setup so add that to my library the only negative thing about that is if you're just clicking on things such as this you're catching the child of this object and now it's going to turn sideways so um, you'd have to click this go to the scene graph make sure you get that parent object to be able to utilize this in the way it was intended so twin motion hope you guys fix that but that is my workaround at the moment Okay, so now we're going to bring you back into that main scene and let's just take a look. We've gone over scene states. You can see here just quickly how, how, how amazing is that? I've obviously got some walls. I've duplicated them, applied different materials to them, and then created scene states so that I can quickly change finish options. 
and most importantly this vector mask which we're going to talk about in just a minute but before we do let's just take a look at some of the other mega scans that are in this scene all of these curbs here this transition piece curb here where it tapers down uh, the posts over here on this railing and the railing itself uh, all from mega scans really a really sharp way of bringing some high quality stuff into the foreground of your shot so please go take a look at that fantastic stuff um, back to our vector masks we've gone over scene states let's look at what vector masks are even going to do for this scene and uh, if you've never seen a movie with a green screen I mean most people are pretty familiar with that and it's used so that it's easily selectable and then you can do something well in the terms of movies do something like rotoscoping in this case we actually want to just be able to edit certain materials and so to do that you need to set up an image and then duplicate that image or just recapture that image in the various scene states now for the purpose of this I actually want to do one thing more which is if we go into this more section under lighting I ended up dragging this shadow all the way down to 10 meters you can see from a default it's somewhere in like 250 meters range or something like that you can see the shadow from this tree as it's cast uh, upon the gable here you can see that this whole side is cast in shadow I want to pull all those shadows out because really I don't need to see accuracy in this model in terms of shadows what I really need to see is I need to see this material nice and bright and clean and clear so I might go in after pulling the shadows out go ahead and capture that image again recapture this and then quit my media mode and do my last edits to this material make sure that it's just what I need it to be maybe throw an additional glow on it something like that and then get back into that image property and export out once we've got it exported we can put it into a layer stack in some software like Photoshop again I don't want to be tra uh, training in Photoshop but uh, just for the purpose of this video let's take a look at what that mask can do with tools like the magic wand in Photoshop it's very easy to select exactly what I want to select here which is that material that that I wanted to edit out right very simple for me to do that and then the next thing I do is I'm just gonna turn off that vector mask and look what happens underneath I can see that I've selected that stucco and I can do things like delete that stucco if I'm on the right layer there you go to reveal a cat on my gable end here so some funny things but you can see that it's perfectly shaped within that gable uh, so there's the purpose of the vector mask there's kind of a, a way of creating a vector mask using scene states and some new materials and I hope that helps some of you if you need to do some heavy post edits or show some additional options or even make more of a realistic scene you could use this same kind of setup to do things like do a little editing just on one particular material or duplicate and bring in a, a whole shadow channel or something like that or a clay rendering on top so uh, a few different things you can do with vector mass that's gonna be it for this video I hope you enjoyed please stay tuned for the next part we are going to be going over that uh, the fun little challenge where we recreate a scene so stay tuned and and as always please subscribe <laughs>